Hello. Um, I'm going to talk to you just a little bit here about colonial economy. Um, this whole presentation will cover uh, triangle trade and the transatlantic uh, slave trade. Um, but I'm just going to talk to you about the economy piece. Um, we will mention the slave trade, but um, I'm going to leave that piece for you to go through on your own. Okay, uh, so here we go. Let's get into it. So, um, so first we need to understand like what is a colony. So it's, it's just a, an area of land, as it says here, that's under the political control of another country, uh, usually from some distance away. Um, between the 1500s and the 1800s, uh, Western European countries um, like like England and France and and Spain and the Netherlands and um, you know Belgium and, and other countries were going out and um, Portugal was a big one. Sorry, uh, they're going out. They're going around the world and they are basically sailing up to places and claiming them as their own. Um, and as we talked about little bit before and we will talk about more in the course uh, this leads to a host of problems um, you know for the uh, indigenous population for the people who are already living there uh, there's uh, problems with war and disease and, and other things but um, you know why would they want to do that is the question you know why are you going around the world and claiming these places as your own and then sending people to live there and um, and so here we go so there's an abundance of natural resources, um, specifically in the English case, as they're colonizing uh, North America. Uh, that's what we're looking at here, but there are resources all over the world. Um, and so natural resources, um, you know, turn into raw materials that you can then use to manufacture other things. Uh, you know, you can, you can turn, you can turn, you know, wood into chairs, you can turn grain into flour, right? You get the idea. Tobacco into finished tobacco. You can use metal for guns and, and furniture, or whatever it is you use metal for, right? Uh, clothes, clothing dye, um, animal skins for for clothing there's there, all of these things were um were what these european countries uh were after and the english you know were after them in north america they want these raw materials that they can then turn around and make into things and then sell them to someone else so um so there's this idea that the more um colonies you have and the more money you have, um, the more powerful your empire is. Even though you might be a tiny little island off the coast of Western Europe, you know, if you control land all over the world and you have vast amounts of wealth, you can buy, you know, the best army and military and navy. Um, and you can kind of, you know, compare your bank account to other countries' bank accounts. And it's, it's kind of becomes a, well, I have more than you do kind of thing. And uh, this is going to lead to this uh, economic theory called mercantilism, where, you know, a nation's power is based upon how wealthy it is. And so to gain more wealth and a favorable balance of trade, countries will, sorry about that. Um, sometimes your son's phone goes off in the middle of a video. So here we are. Um, yeah. So to establish a, a balance of a favorable balance of trade, you, you make these colonies. So you have someone to not only provide you the resources, but then to also buy the stuff from you. And that's, that's what mercantilism is. Um, all right, here we go. So how does mercantilism work? Okay, first off, um, you establish colonies. You get those colonies to harvest raw materials and sell them to you cheap or ship them back to you. But, but you know, people have to make a, make a living. So you're going you're gonna to buy raw materials from the colonies for cheap. You're buying lumber. You're buying crops. You're buying animal furs. And you buy them cheap. Then the mother country, in this case, England, uh, it's a mother country because it's the country from which all the other colonies came, right? The mother country is going to turn around and they're going to make 
stuff. They're going to manufacture goods from those raw materials. Then those manufactured goods are going to be, you're going to ship them back to the colonies and have them buy them from you at more than you bought the original stuff from, right? Okay, follow me so far. Colonies make the raw materials, the raw, and they harvest the raw materials. They get sent back to England. England makes the manufactured goods and they are sold to the colonies. And it's, and step five here, it says, you know, limit the colonies um, to only trade with the mother country. And that, that's a big deal here. Like the, um, you want to restrict your colonies to only send you the stuff and only buy your stuff. And the more closed and tight you can keep that system, the more money the mother country is going to make. Kind of sounds like a hustle. Kind of sounds like if you're living in England, you got a better deal than if you're living in the colonies. Keep that in mind for later. Um, port cities like New York and Boston, Philadelphia and Charleston are going to be really important to facilitate this sort of trade. Um, you know, these are cities that are on the coast and have natural harbors where you can easily dock your ships. So traffic can, can, uh, can come in and out, um, off the Atlantic ocean and you can, uh, pull your ship up close to shore, unload your goods, make your trades and, and, uh, go on from there. Uh, here's another picture. Again, the colonies, what they're producing, right? Send it over to England, what England is making, and selling back to them. This is mercantilism. Here's a um, here's a, a famous picture of a way of picturing mercantilism. All right, so we're gonna you know, look at that closely. Uh, when, whenever we look at um, at pictures, you want to you want to look at at the words that are in the picture because the labels mean things. Um, and so, so you know, you have here. Obviously, we have colony here, right? We have mother country right here, and what uh, looks like the mother country is sitting down to eat, right? And what is the um, what are the colonies feeding her? Well. They're bringing her gold and silver. They're bringing her foodstuffs. They're bringing her raw materials. Um, all to increase the wealth of the mother country, right? All to fatten her up. Um, who do we think this might be? Think about that, right? Another important detail here. You might notice what she has on her head. But again, this idea that the colonies are... The colony's whole purpose is to serve the mother country and to bring, literally to bring the goods and then buy whatever the mother country sells back to them. Oh yeah, Rem remember salutary neglect? This beneficial ignoring? Uh, this is where it kind of comes in. Um, as long as the um, English North American colonies kind of played nice and played by the rules um, as long as they sent the raw materials over and they bought they bought the stuff from England and they only interacted with England the English government for a long time was had a very hands-off approach they were kind of like yeah you know what make your own rules as long as you're not like an open rebellion and you're participating in the economy it's it's kind of you know you rule yourself all right Here's a picture of uh, what's called triangle trade. And yeah, there's a couple of triangles in here, but yeah. So basically, um, you know, um, you got, you got manufacturing, oh, sorry, you got your raw materials coming over to England, right? England is going to ship those back. They're going to be sold. So this is one side of it, right? Another side is England and those European countries were taking manufactured goods and they were going to places in West Africa and they are they are using that to purchase people to enslave people um, and they're taking those enslaved people um, or those enslaved persons across the Atlantic Ocean to the New World um, and it wasn't just to the 
the Caribbean or North America, you know, people were coming out of, of, um, you know, West Africa and the places like, like South America too. Uh, this is called the middle passage where, and, and you'll, you'll get more on that later today. Uh, but you know, manufactured goods are exchanged for people. Those people are then put to work on plantations in the new world. They are worked literally to death. Um, and uh, treated just like property, and uh, their only value being in that you know they were able to produce some of these raw materials. Um, I should say their only value to this economic system being that they could produce these raw materials. They are people; they have inherent value, and let's not lose sight of that. Um, but these enslaved peoples are, are used in places like the West Indies or the Caribbean and, and the 13 colonies, um, specifically in places like the South, um, but also up in New England and the middle colonies at this time, to produce these raw materials that are then shipped back over. They purchase people. They come over here. It comes over there. You'll notice uh, sugar, fruit, and coffee are coming out of the West Indies as well. That's that was also very, um, very uh, lucrative for many of these European countries. Uh, sugar uh, and tobacco, but you know, sugar at this time early on was kind of king. Then it'll it'll be tobacco, and then later in the 1800s, cotton really takes over. But this is this is a picture of, of triangle trade. Um, as it was presented, or as it functioned in the mercantile system. All right, I'm going to leave you right there. Um, I'm going to go through the Middle Passage, the Transatlantic Slave Trade in the Middle Passage, uh, to go through the provided documents, listen to the firsthand account, and work through the rest of this on your own. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please... Uh, well, I, you can rewind the video uh, to help you out with your notes, uh, but you can also email me. Um, all right. Hope you all have a good day.